onto the bowl of each of the spoons and make some observations. What does it do it? Rolling around the water. Rolling around the water, rolling around the green spoon. It's acting like a bead on the green spoon. What's it doing on the tan spoon or the other color? Kind of clinging, right? Try some more. Add a little bit more water. How much water can you, if you add more water to the tan spoon, will it behave like a green spoon? No. No. All right. If I tell you that one of these spoons is coated with sand from the beach, which one would that be? What's your evidence? Water. That's the color of beach sand, right? <laughs> Not usually green. What's your other evidence? Because beach sand, the water sort of just goes, lays on it, goes back off, goes in, goes out, right? Just sort of there. It doesn't ball up like the green one. So the green one is also coated with sand. The question is, how is it different? There's something else with it. What kind of thing is with it? A coating. A coating. What kind of coating? Hydrophobic. So you see if you teach hydrophobic, hates water. What else could you teach? Adhesion. Adhesion. What else could you teach? Describe the coating. Is the coating <laughs> hates water? You can talk about things that hate water, things that like water, the chemical structure of those, etc. Polar, non-polar, bonding, kinds of things you can do with this little toy. How did we do this? We took the spoon, we sprayed it with a spray adhesive, and sprinkled some sand, play sand. How do we do the green one? We bought another toy. We bought magic sand. We bought magic sand. We the same way though. We sprayed them with the adhesive, we sprinkled the magic sand on, let it dry just a little bit, and you're done. Magic sand. We want to explore that in more detail. Get some water in the bowl of this and find a friend and see if you can do drop toss. <laughs> what you see, but it's science because as you observe the drop going through the air, the drop stays together because of the cohesive forces, the hydrogen bonding in water. You also learn some physics when it hits. <laughs> but try it. You can't. You got, it's like an egg toss, but a little bit trickier. <laughs> and you got to experience it. And see, that's why we did that. Because this is relatively inexpensive and it gives the kids an opportunity to explore the properties of the two kinds of sand. If you, you know, we're doing this in front of your students, it's, you know, you're doing a demo, but the thing to remember as you do demos, and you have to choose them wisely, you're the only one getting to do something. All the kids are sitting there passively. So by doing the spoon thing first, you have given them an opportunity to explore and experience this stuff because you can't give them all a bag of this. All right? Okay, cool. So you got your water, right? So the first thing I want you to do is take some of your sand, take some of your sand, and I want you to sprinkle it on top of the water. You make some observations. What are you noticing? All right. Now wait. Before it stops, just get a layer on the top. The surface tension. Obviously, the surface tension of the water is is um, enough, you know, to support a, a fine layer of sand. What I want you to do when you get a nice layer on the top, it doesn't matter if some is some. I want you to slowly put your finger down into the middle, under the water, make some observations, pull it out.
What did, what did you notice about your finger when you pulled it out? It's what? It's dry because the sand is hydrophobic. All right, it allows your finger to remain dry. All right, so now you're free to add as much sand as you want and explore. You can build different structures, right? All right, and it, it, has, it has been observed that there's a, a pure silver. And basically what's going on there, as the sand falls down through the, the surface, it traps air around it. And so what happens then as the reflected light comes in and bounces out, some of it gets reflected backwards, internal reflection backwards off the underside of the bubble. And that's why it appears silver. If you take a scoop out of the water, it goes back to looking just like it was before. So that's, that's what that is. It needs the water to make these structures. This is the hydrophobic effect. You need the water to maintain those shapes. I poured a clear color of this liquid on this. Is this behaving the way the magic sand that you guys have did? You see that it starts to dissolve some of the coating. So is this clear color of this liquid water? No. Would you predict it be alcohol? Why would you rule alcohol out? Colder. It's more like water. It has OHs on it, right? But it, the, it does not have the same capturing of the air, nor does it have, have the same uh, hydrophobic effect that water has. So in order to have the hydrophobic effect, you need water. I'm gonna pour in some water. So the liquid that I added was less dense than water. The liquid that I added dissolved a little bit of the color from the water, uh, from the sand. This actually happens to be hexane. Now we're going to decant the liquid off. Let's pat the solid dry. Similar behavior, not as, not as slick, still got some of that coating stuff on it, but able to build towers, a little bit of that internal reflection. I will tell you, they will not forget polar or non-polar.